A very warm welcome to each and every one of you in our studios today. We have uh, Dr. Joey Jagan. He is no stranger to our community. He is the son of the late Dr. Shetty Jagan. And uh, Joey is down here at our studios to talk about upcoming elections in Guyana. As you know, the elections are scheduled for May 11th, a big day uh, for the Guyanese people. And uh, Joey has been in politics all his life. His father was, as you know, the leader, the founder of the PPP, the People's Progressive Party. Uh, Dr. Chetty Jagan, the late Dr. Chetty Jagan, has made a, con a significant contribution to the growth of Guyana, to the development of uh, the people, and to the general improvement of the lives of the people in Guyana. And uh, Dr. Joey Jagan has uh, stood by and observed over the last few years as he migrated back to Guyana uh, to see, you know, where politics has gone and where it's going in the future. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity to speak with him as we uh, get prepared for upcoming elections in Guyana. So welcome. Well, thanks uh, for having me. You're very All welcome, right. Dr. Joey Jagan. So now um, let's speak a little bit about... Um, the coalition politics that's going on in Ghana. As you yeah. know, APNU and EFC is a coalition right. uh, party as such. Do you believe that Ghana is ready for a coalition government? Well, I, I've always advocated coalition governance uh, and sharing of power. I use it as my own words of a slice of the pie to everybody of the Guyanese pie. I think we have a great future, but we have to unite politically to get the job done. There's too much division and it's based on ethnic or race relations mm -hmm. and that's been going on for too long so my father believed in coalition in 1953 that was a coalition in 1964 after all the problems my father urged called for coalition in 1985 he tried for coalition and when he became president he formed a civic which he meant to bring to make bigger to make coalition politics a reality. Mm -hmm. So I'm for coalition, yes. I think it's good for Ghana. Uh, and to further say, uh, I'm a, a, a believer in the, the theories and works of Mahatma Gandhi. And he talked strongly against majority and rule. He always talked about paying attention to the minorities and bringing them in. Mm -hmm. He was against majority and rule. And that's what we have in Ghana today, one party rule. Mm -hmm. Right? And I'm against one party rule. Now, you have migrated back to Ghana now for how many years? You for a long time. I, I, I went back to Ghana. Uh, I purchased a Charlotte Street property where I have my dental office in 1991. So I've been back in Ghana since before that. I always went to Ghana. And I'm very uh, concerned with what's happening in Ghana. As I said in the interview, we never had major hurricanes, volcanoes, any natural disasters. But our mm -hmm. natural disaster has been the political influence of those who want to stay divided well it's yeah. a public it's a public fact that you are very um, you know uh, disheartened by the way yeah. the ppp has run the country right. um what specifically are you um are you against w what is it that makes you that grieves your heart as you see the way the government is running right now well i think that the government uh is not addressing the problems of corruption in government service they're not addressing unity of bringing other people in to share that pie. We have a legitimate opposition, a big opposition. And I, as you know, I ran with the PP last time. People have been accusing me of flip-flopping or wrong issues, but I have not. I have held my position all the time. When I ran the last time, I gave the PP critical support. Mm -hmm. And I ran with them. And after the election, I sent many uh, emails and letters of car to the pre president offering when are we going to have meetings? Nothing. I never heard anything from them. Mm -hmm. And I start to develop a critical approach again. And here I am today. Uh, so what we have today is that I urge the president, instead of, because I was on the list for the PEP, on the electoral list in the last election. So I urge the president and the party openly that they, they should compromise, reconcile, bring the opposition in the government. Mm -hmm. And then serve your five terms. Do not give up a day of, of your term. Mr. Ramadar decided otherwise. And here we are with facing election. He could have gone the other way and brought people in and made uh, inclusionary politics the watchword of the day, which is what we need. Mm -hmm. When you have ethnic divide, coalition politics is, is a reality, is a good thing. Look at all the countries of the world today. Coalition is a new world order. Mm -hmm. Look at England, Cameron. Look at Germany. Look at in Yemen. 
there's coalition talks going on. Right. Even while they're killing each other. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, so coalition is the only answer. Look at Modi in India. How did he get in coalitions? So that's why I'm for coalition. Now, do you, pe do you feel the people of Ghana is ready for a coalition government, though? Yes, I feel so f fully. that I feel the people of Ghana want a change in the political atmosphere of confrontation, constant confrontation on every single issue. We need a hydropower. We need good hotels. We need all these things. But we also need the small things for the people, which this government, that is where I'm critical. Mm -hmm. They give us these big projects. What about the small playing fields for the kids? The, the pure water so people can have good drinking water. The, the buses for our kids to go to school. Mm -hmm. What about those things? They're non-existent. Now you're a doctor, you're a yeah. dentist. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say the healthcare system is like presently in Guyana? This healthcare system overall is uh, not the best. It's not uh, up to the standards we are accustomed to. Uh, but however, people might say it's a third world country. But I think that we have uh, the healthcare system is run by Mr. Barry Ramsaran, who just resigned or was forced to resign. And I think he was uh, incompetent, to tell you the truth. Just like that's another problem we have. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to get into a long litany of problems. I, my position is clear, very clear. Said so simple you have served 23 years. There is no country in the Caribbean, there's no place in America would tolerate anybody serving for 23 years. Mm -hmm. Even if you're doing a decent job, it's time for change. Look at Barbados. Owen Arthur was a good prime minister. He did a lot for Barbados, but after 10 years, they voted him out. Mm -hmm. And I think we need the same. It's a breath of fresh air. And yeah. we have to have trust and hope in the future. Don't condemn people outright. You don't know what they're going to do. But there's a lot to do. We need to cut. take the diaspora, take our people in the diaspora. We need to bring our people home. But you know, anybody who went home to invest, the red tape mm -hmm. can't get through it. Right. So we need to change these things. Many things need changing. Now, your dad had, you know, very high standards, great mm -hmm. principles uh, when he created the, the People's yes. Progressive Party. Uh, do you feel, in your opinion, that those principles have been carried forth to the now party, the now no, I, no, party? No, I'm sorry. I don't feel so at all. I am convinced that the principles my father held, which were the same principles Mahatma held, because my father, I want people to know, you know, people don't understand this. My father grew up in the age of Gandhi. As people were maturing politically, mm -hmm. Jagan matured in the early 40s, late 30s. That's when Gandhi was the height of his power. So understand the influence of Gandhi had on our nation mm -hmm. and still has, right? And people should read more about him and what he stood for. Right. And then they can understand Guyana and the problems we have. But coming to what you asked me, uh, no, my father, as a matter of fact, would not have been very pleased with what's happening in his party today. Because I can't run, run with them last time. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you in Burbese, the organizational structure of the PP, that's why the lost votes, was crumbling. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like when Jagan was there. A lot of things when Jagan was there was not occurring. But do so. you feel that there is a, a great, uh, significant, powerful support uh, in, in Burbese, let's say, where there's a stronghold of East Indians? Well, I would, you see, you see, you know, I understand that. And I look at East Indians, are, are, are East Indian people are really trapped. They're really trapped. And I'll tell you why. If Mr. Granger was an Indian mm -hmm. and they had no black people living in Ghana, none, only Indians, the PP can win 20% of the vote. Mm -hmm. They would lose this election badly. And what has happened is again the same old story. We caught in a racial trap, right? Now because it's fair to them, don't vote for a black man and make him president. That is in grained mm -hmm. and vice versa but now I guess. with the partnership of um, mr moses nakamoto mm -hmm. with david granger do you feel that prejudicial racial tension will you know uh disintegrate well i wouldn't say use a, that's a, 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 a extreme word disintegrate i would say it would start to disconnect and yes i feel so i feel that with coalition politics that is the answer to our worst malady 
which is racial, racialism in both the economics, the politics, the cultural, which we need to push down, mm -hmm. right? And, and you can see in America, look, you live in Queens. Next door might be a Polish, the other side might be a Nigerian, but you get along well. Indeed. You live good. Why do you live good? Because of affluency. Money's there. People are making it. We need the same thing again. We need to create a good economic life for our people. Mm -hmm. And with the right leadership and change, those things will take care of themselves at the bottom, the racialism thing. So I hope that this could bring a positive for Ghana and, and bring unity. We need unity in Ghana. And if Mr. Nagamoto and Mr. Granger could bring that unity, I'm all for it. Well, in a recent interview with both of them, they did talk about the importance of bringing unity amongst the people in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're very passionate about that. But, uh, Joy, we have lots I'm more to talk. To we have lots more to talk about. Uh, we're going to be right back after this break. Welcome back to our special segment. In our studios today is Dr. Joey Jagan. He is the son of the late Dr. Chetty Jagan, the leader, the founder of the People's Progressive Party, Civic uh, of Guyana. And Joey uh, is a resident of Guyana. He's migrated back there, I believe, in 1991, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. he knows uh, about the politics of Guyana. He, you know has a, a very prominent dental practice in Georgetown. So he interacts with the Guyanese people. He hears their voices. He listens to their concerns. And I thought it would be best to have him on the show so that he can uh, portray uh, his view on what's happening um, in Guyana with, uh, in regards to the upcoming elections. Now, Joe, you have observed mm -hmm. the, the campaign trails of both sides, right. the PPP and also the APNU AFC. Right. Uh, things are getting very hot, very heated, just mm -hmm. a few weeks left. What is your take in terms of who's winning so far? Well, I really would not know that uh, completely. I mean, the campaign is hot and things are happening and I think that uh, everything is looking good. It, it, the main question is about the youth. If the youth are going to come out and vote in numbers. Mm -hmm. And we won't know that until election day. But there's a lot of enthusiasm. So you, you're saying election. the winning votes depend on the young people coming out yes. and casting their votes. Yeah, I feel so. Coming out and casting. Is this what was know. lacking in, in the last elections? Where the uh, young yeah, people every election. Out? A lot of elections has been happening. And why but do you think that's you see, the case? You see, I remember now, Ghana doesn't have the good polling things that you have here. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know. It, everybody's casting a, ca a fisherman casting for fish. <laughs> Nobody mm -hmm. knows for sure. But the elections are observed. There is uh, there's yeah, but monitoring. There's no, right, but there's no actual polling like what you have here. Mm -hmm. You know, there's actual polling on a daily basis come the election. So if you have a poll, then you'd know. Yeah, but we don't have that. So you just but what's the feedback like from, from well, what it you're seems hearing? That people, yeah, it seems that people are interested, uh, young people are getting involved. So you feel that a lot, of the, a, lot, a lot more people will be coming out this time? Well, I, I feel so and I hope so. And I've been pitching that too. Wonderful. Yeah, that they should come out and vote. Well, it, yeah. I think it's important um, that everyone, you know, comes out to vote regardless of who you're voting for. Right. Because your vote will definitely make right. a difference. Um, now, with the working class people, as I mentioned, you're, you have your dental practice right. there. A lot of your, your patients yeah. are the working class people right. that come to you. Mm. Um, what, is, what are some of the things that they're telling you as the son of the leader of this People's Progressive Party, the mm. late Dr. Chetty Jagan, a man who, whom everyone admires for his principles, yeah. the, the standard of his politics? Um, what are some of the concerns that you hear from the working class? Well, the usual things, you know, like uh, the prices of cost of living is going up. And a lot of people want change. I feel so. And I get that feedback in my office uh, that people... Uh, but you see, Guyanese are cagey, you know. They don't discuss their politics openly too much. Mm. Guyanese, they go around the business. They're cool-headed people and they're waiting for election day. That's what I feel. I feel the Guyanese people have more or less made up their mind, most of them. Mm -hmm. And they're very cool and they're waiting to go out and cast their vote. And I think that vote going to be about change. I think that they're tired of the way things are. They're fed up. A lot of them, if you talk, like, take, take my people who work with me. I have four girls who work with me. And if you give them a visa and a job in America tomorrow, they'll be gone. Mm. Gone, all four. So people are frustrated, especially young people. You know, and they want change. And that's what I feel will happen. 
Now, especially businessmen and even, you know, the, the general population of Ghana, they're very concerned about, um, you know, the, the pro-rioting that comes, mm -hmm. you know, uh, right. prior to elections. Um, last elections, there was a lot of rioting, a lot of, you know, burning mm -hmm. and fires and uh, a lot of, you know, disaster and chaos going on. Mm -hmm. um, do you foresee anything like that happening based on what you've been observing with the campaigning? Uh, well, I, no, I, don't, I don't see that. I think there are enough observers. and if, uh, I think my personal view is I think Mr. Obama has a close eye in this election. And I feel Mr. Obama is a just and fair man. And he'll make sure the things, he'll put in his input to make sure things go right. Mm -hmm. And also, also all the uh, people in Ghana, the observers and the, the civil society and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, this election might surprise people. It might be more peaceful than people I think. I think people have made up their mind and they're just waiting for that day to go and cast their ballot. Now, if we had uh, Mr. Donald Ramatar in our studios and uh, Mr. Granger as the presidential mm -hmm. candidate, uh, what is one thing that you would say to Mr. Do Donald Ramatar, our president, and one thing that you would say to Mr. David Granger, uh, the presidential candidate? Well, I would tell both of them the same thing, that if they win, to please cast off your cast off any inhibitions you have to get close in trade and relations with the United States of America. We have excellent opportunities. Mr. Obama is there another two years, and Mr. Obama is a friend again, I know that. Just like he's a friend to all other countries in the world. So you, I, I think Mr. Obama has a partial interest in Ghana because of the Venezuelan story. Because what happened in Venezuela, the geopolitics of the area. Uh, and I feel that we need to tighten up relations and bring back our diaspora. To invest and live in Ghana if they want to safely and soundly. That's what we need to do. That's the first primary thing. And to fix our infrastructure for the people, not just for tourists, but for us. Mm -hmm. We need it fixed for us. Right? And then the tourists come second. But that is the problem. Everything is about the tourists, and even that isn't done. But what about us? We need help, the right. people of Ghana from our leaders. Yeah, well, you know, uh, May 11th is definitely an exciting day for all Guyanese and even for, for the diaspora here. We follow what's mm -hmm. going on. We care about what's going on in right. Guyana. Um, it's the place of our birth and, and, you know, we are still very much connected. Right. So we are just on standby. We're, um, you know, waiting to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I guess we wouldn't know until May 12th right. uh, who well, actually wins we, that election, we hopefully don't even know by May that. 12th. We don't even know about that. Right. If we have the election result the next day. Yeah. It's been notoriously long, uh, many elections. So we hope that could change too. Right. We have a result. I mean, if you think about it, 500 are odd vote, 1,000 odd voters, and they take, they can't, they should give the result the same night of that right. election or the next day, midday. But it never works like that, yeah. unfortunately. Well, at least we have the confidence that it's free and fair elections in Ghana, you know, so. Well, um, we have a lot of observers. Let's hope You know, it's so safer. that is, that instills confidence in, in all of mm -hmm. us. Um, but, you know, as a media uh, personality here, you know, with well over 27 years in the media business, I just want to really send a message to our Guyanese uh, brothers and sisters who are watching this program, maybe on YouTube, um, that, you know, there should be no violence, uh, you know, with the decision. I think, you know, if we all uh, live in harmony, live in peace and uh, not create havoc in our country, uh, it will be a better place for all of us. After all, we have to start s at some point uh, where we, we can live together in, in unison. And one way to, to step away from that, uh, you know, from, from that vision uh, is if rioting and fights and, and breakouts start in, in various villages. So I want to ask you and to implore that, um, you know, the Guyanese people refrain uh, from from such activities and to respect uh, the decision of the elections and um, and hopefully whatever it is um, that you know that decision will better all Guyanese um, as as Dr. Joey Jagan mentioned you know Ghana needs unity and um, you know there's it's it's time for for people to come together and and really take Ghana to to the next level and I think we're getting there uh, Joey mm -hmm. well, that's uh, Ghana so. has come a long way mm -hmm. um, we definitely have you know improvements developments uh, but there's still a lot of work yet to be done mm -hmm. um, so again thank you for coming yeah, aboard uh, and sharing your view right. we appreciate that your view does uh, does um, mean a lot uh, with your coming from a political you know family yeah. and a well-respected family at that well thanks for having me yeah our and pleasure. Right. Great. All, All right. the best. Take care.